This is Madge Leoparte, a member of the Design Tools Marketing Team at Lattice Semiconductor. Welcome to the Lattice Radiant Software Design Tool Flow Training Series. If you haven't checked the first two parts of this training, please go to the Radiant product page, go to Videos, and look for Lattice Radiant Design Tool Flow Part 1 and 2. On your screen are the topics that we have discussed during the Part 1 training, getting started with Radiant, creating a new Radiant project, adding design source files, and IP instantiation using IP catalog. And then for the second part, we talked about how to use the simulation wizard, how to add constraints, and how to use the different debugging tools in the Lattice Radiant software. In this part 3 video, we will talk about how to use Power Calculator, how to analyze static timing, how to program the FPGA, and how to use Reveal Inserter. We have Sukruth Krishnamurthy to walk you through these topics. Hi, welcome to Lattice Stadium Software Tool Flow Training. My name is Sukruth Kumar Krishnamurthy. I work as an applications engineer responsible for design software tools. Today, through this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Lattice Radiant tool and some of the features we have in the Lattice Radiant software. Radiant also comes with another tool called Power Calculator, which estimates the power dissipation of a given design. To open the Power Calculator, go to Tools and click on Power Calculator. This Power Calculator uses parameters such as voltage, temperature, process variations, airflow, heat sink, resource utilization, activity, and frequency to calculate the device power consumption. It reports both static and dynamic estimated power consumption. Power calculator allows you to import frequency and activity factors from the post power simulation file or the VCD file. After the design information is added, power calculator provides accurate power consumption analysis for the design. Power calculator provide, provides two modes for reporting power consumption. The estimation mode, which will be used before completing the design, that is before place and route, and the calculation mode, it is based on the physical net list or the UDB after place, place and route. As we have opened the power calculator post place and route, you can see the mode of calculation software mode is the calculation mode, and this is not an estimated mode. You can browse through various tabs here and it gives you information about different things that are in the design. If you go to the power matrix, this talks about the VCC power consumption of the design. If you go to the logic block, this says how is the logic block using uh, the power and what is the power estimates of the logic blocks. If you go to clocks, you can see the clock related power consumption and power analysis. If you go to IOs, you can see the IO related power analysis. And various tabs gives you different kinds of power analysis based on the different tabs that we have here. If you're using a MIPI define your design, you can go to the MIPI define and see the power analysis or the power consumption of this MIPI define device. If you're using a PCIe, similarly you can go to this PCIe tab to analyze the power of the PCIe. You can also run this power calculator using the tickle console window from here. This tickle console window enables you to use tickle commands to perform many power analysis functions. For a complete list of list and descriptions of power calculator tickle commands, please see the tickle command reference guide in the tickle command reference guide section in the online help. At any time, if you want to use the online help, you can go to help and click on Lattice Radiant Software Help, and this opens up the online help that can be used to see the you can use this online help to see all the resources that are available for different tools and all the functionalities of the entire Radiant software. If you have a large design, it can quickly get complicated and the best approach is not always obvious or definite. There may be many ways to get optimal performance out of your design. The key is to find out one option that works. In Radiant software, each project can contain multiple source files strategies, and implementations. All these implementations comprises of selected source files and only one strategy. As you can see, one of the strategies is act active all the time, and one of the implementation is active all the time. You can create multiple implementation to bind different strategies. 
let's say you want to create different strategies for different implementation for experimentation purposes you will be able to create multiple implementations and multiple strategies and bind each of the implementation with that particular strategy after creating implementations you can use run manager to run multiple synthesis and place and route passes compare the results of multiple implementations for further analysis to get best solution run manager also helps you to manage running the design implementation process with multiple project implementations and to compare the results you can monitor progress view reports and quickly identify the best implementation in order to open the run manager go to tools and click on run manager as you can see the run manager opens in the bottom tab of radiant from this run manager you see that there is one implementation in this project and that is being populated here if you want to create multiple implementations go to the implementation tab right click on the implementation and select clone implementation and give a name to the implementation i'm going to give implementation 2 but currently strategy 3 is active and that is why this default strategy is chosen as strategy 3 you can always go back and change the strategy that can be used with the particular implementation you can either copy all the files of this implementation to the new implementation or you can continue with the existing references let us copy the files to the new implementation for this tutorial click on ok and you will see impl underscore 2 being created here Note that IMPL underscore 2 is not active because it is not bolted. And you can see IMPL underscore 2 also appears here in the run manager. If you want to make the IMPL underscore 2 to be active, right click on IMPL underscore 2 and choose set as active implementation. Now IMPL underscore 2 became the active implementation and all the process steps is reset. But the process is currently run using app IMPL1. You can always go back and make IMPL1 active and you see the process being active at this point. Now, let me make IMPL2 active. But I want to use a different strategy with IMPL2. Let's say I want to use strategy 1 with this IMPL underscore 2. I can go to strategy 1 and make it active. When you make this active, this strategy now would be used with IMPL2. In order to have multiple implementations and strategies run at parallel, you can use Run Manager. Once you're ready with all the implementations, click on the play button to run implementations. You will be prompted with this. You can just say OK here. And that starts with the implementation run for different implementations. This also shows you what strategy is used with what implementation and the status of Run Manager. Right now, IMPL2 is active and that is running. Once the process is completed, you will be able to see the summary in this, in this table. All the related reports and other files will be saved in the implementation directory under IMPL2 or IMPL1 based on the implementation that you are running. These are the default columns that shows up when you launch Run Manager. If you want to add additional columns onto this, right click on any of these columns and choose any of these columns that you would want to see. Let's say you want to see the location. You can click on location and location populates on this on the on run manager. If you want to do a start, that also populates here. You can just scroll through to see those locations and start button that are added onto the run manager. After you're done with the implementation, you would want to generate the bit stream and program the FPGA. To generate the bitstream, go to the process tab and click double click on bitstream file. Now the bitstream is generated. If you are using any IP that are licensed and if you do not have the license and if you want to use it in the evaluation mode, you have to go to the strategy setting, go to bitstream and click on enable IP evaluation. If you click on the IP evaluation, you will be able to generate the bitstream for the licensed IP for which you don't have the license for, and the bitstream will be valid for four hours. Since in this tutorial project, we have not used any IPs that require a license, we are good to go and program the FPGA. To program the FPGA, we have the programmer tool that allows you to program the FPGA. Go to tools, 
and select the programmer. This opens up the programmer and you will be able to see the FPGA, you will be able to program the FPGA through this programmer. If you open the programmer directly from the idiot, you will see that the bit file is already included in this programmer. You will have to make a few changes in this if you wanna make, if you, are, if you want to use the uh, target memory as static RAM, or if you wanna program it on the S SPI flash, you can make these changes using this device properties. Once you are done with all the settings, you can click on detect cable and program the FPGA using this program device button. The progress of the programmer will be shown in the output window here. Once it is successfully programmed, you will get a message telling that it is successfully programmed. Once you have successfully programmed the FPGA and generated the pit stream, you would many times want to see what is happening inside the FPGA while it is running. To do that, we have a special tool called Reveal. We have Reveal Inserter and Reveal Analyzer or Controller. The Reveal Inserter lets you create a debug module and add to your design. The Reveal Controller or Analyzer will help you to control the debug module and to view the test results. Click on Reveal Inserter to open Reveal. This reveal is a flexible system that lets you specify the signals you want to add and when you want to see them. The events that trigger sampling the signals can range from very simple to very complex. The logic analyzer core has several features built up to a powerful logic analyzer. To add a logic analyzer core, go to add core and click on add logic analyzer. From here, you will be able to trace any of these signals that are shown in the signal tab. Trace signals are the signals that you want to analyze. Sample clock here is a clock from your design. Trace signals are sampled on the rising edge of this sample clock. We also have trigger units. This trigger unit are the signals that you want to monitor and, log and logic to monitor them for certain values. The trigger expressions are logical or sequential combina combinations of the trigger units. Trigger events are logical or sequential combinations of the trigger expressions. Trigger events trigger up, up, uploading the trend signals to reveal analyzer or controller. We also have a sample example project to use reveal. If you go to start page and click on open examples, there is a counter underscore reveal, which you can use to see how the reveal operates and you will be able to see and use reveal inserter or analyzer. Now that brings us to the end of this tutorial. To recap, we started with creating a new project in Radiant. We customized an IP using the IP catalog. We looked at how to use the simulation wizard for simulation. We set a couple of timing constraints and also location constraints using the timing constraint editor and the device constraint editor. We saw how to use the process, this process to process the design, synthesize, map, place and route, and even generate the bit stream. We saw how to use the debugging tools like Netlist Analyzer and Physical Designer and some cross probing between the reports and the floor planning view with the physical designing view. We also saw the power calculator to see how do we analyze the power consumption. We also analyzed a few static timing paths through the timing analyzer and also the reports. We used the programmer to see how to program the FPGA. And finally, we saw that we could use Reveal Inserter to do on-chip debugging. Thank you for listening.